Dividing is the opposite of multiplying. Division is the opposite of multiplication. Here are some multiplying facts. 4 times 7 is equal to 28. 8 times 9 is equal to 72. 6 times 12 is equal to 72. 16 times 3 is equal to 48. 8 times 6 is equal to 48. Now let's find 28 divided by 7. So we need the product to be 28 and one of the numbers being multiplied to be 7. And here we find that in the first equation. Here is the product of 28 and the number being multiplied of 7. The only other number being multiplied is 4. So 28 divided by 7 is equal to 4. Let's now find 48 divided by 16. The last two equations have the product of 48, but we also need 16 to be one of the numbers being multiplied. And here we find that in the fourth equation. Here is the product of 48 and the number being multiplied as 16. The only other number being multiplied is 3, so 48 divided by 16 is equal to 3. Let's now find 72 divided by 8. So we need the product to be 72 and one of the numbers to be multiplied to be 8. Now the second and third equation do have a product of 72, but out of those two equations, only the second equation in total, the only the equation of 8 times 9 is equal to 72, has both the product of 72 and the number being multiplied of 8. So here is the product of 72 and the number being multiplied of 8. The only other number being multiplied is 9, so 72 divided by 8 is 9. Let's again use this fact that division is the opposite of multiplication. Here are all the rules for multiplying real numbers. The reasons behind these rules can be found in a previous set of videos about multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers. Hopefully the link for that set of videos is in the description of this video. A positive number times a positive number is a positive number. A positive number times a negative number is a negative number. A negative number times a positive number is a negative number. A negative number times a negative number is a positive number. Zero times any number is zero. Any number times zero is zero. In this set of videos, I'm going to be using A to talk about any number and I'm going to be using x to talk about any number but 0. So a could be 0 while x could not be 0. So let's change this equation into these two equations. These two equations of 0 times x is equal to 0 and 0 times 0 is equal to 0. Let's change this equation of a times 0 is equal to 0 to these two equations of x times 0 is equal to 0 and 0 times 0 is equal to 0. Now we have two equations that are exactly the same in this list. Let's just make them one equation in this list. Now let's find from these rules of multiplying and from the fact that division is opposite of multiplication, let's now find what 0 divided by x is. So here's the product of 0 and here's x, one of the numbers being multiplied and the other one being multiplied is 0. So 0 divided by x is equal to 0. However, we don't only have to use this equation, we could also use this equation. Here's the product of 0, here's one of the numbers being multiplied of x, and here's the leftover number being multiplied of 0. So in either case, 0 divided by x is equal to 0. 0 divided by 0. In this equation, I circled the product of 0, I circled one of the numbers being multiplied of 0, and I circled the leftover 0. Now we could have looked at this equation a different way. Here is the product of 0. Now I'm circling the first 0 as being one of the numbers being multiplied of 0 and the second 0 as being the leftover 0 of the number being multiplied. So
So from this equation, you would think that zero divided by zero is zero. However, let's look at the fifth and sixth equation. Zero divided by zero. Well, here is the product of zero. Here is one of the numbers being multiplied of zero. And here's the leftover number being multiplied, x. We could also look at the fifth equation. Here is the product of zero. Here is one of the numbers being multiplied as zero. And here is a leftover number being multiplied of x. So based on those two equations, we would think that zero divided by zero is equal to x. Now remember, in this set of videos, I'm going to be using x to talk about any number but zero, and a to be talking about any number could be zero. So we could change those two equations to zero divided by zero is equal to a, is equal to any number. Now you can't have an answer being any number. So this means that it's undefined, that there is no answer really. Let's now find x divided by zero, where x is any number but zero. So we can't use the first equation because zero is not a number that's being multiplied. We can't use the second equation because zero is not a number that's being multiplied. Same for the third and fourth equations. We can't use the fifth equation because our product is zero, which can't be x because x is any number but zero. We can't use the sixth equation because we're, the product is zero, which can't be x. Same for the seventh equation. So that means if we can't use any of these equations, that means that there is no answer. x divided by zero is nothing. So that means that x divided by zero is undefined. We can simplify the, these two equations of zero divided by zero, I mean these two expressions of zero divided by zero and x divided by zero into one expression of a divided by zero is undefined because in this set of videos we're using a to talk about any number could be zero and x to be talked about and x to talk about any number but zero so that means that a divided by zero is undefined meaning you cannot divide by zero also you cannot have a fraction as a denominator of zero let's now talk about the zero product property it states that if y times z is equal to zero, then y must be zero, z must be zero, or y and z must be zero. That means that if we have two numbers being multiplied and we know their product is zero, then one of the numbers or both of the numbers has to be zero. So let's confirm that this is true. So the first option it gives is y must be zero, that this is one of the options. So this means that the first number could be zero. In this equation that I circled in the left-hand side, it has the first number being multiplied as zero and the answer being zero. But the one in the middle, x, is not zero. So this one talks about this possibility of y being zero. What about z as zero? we can circle this equation on the left hand side with blue. So that means that the second number could be zero as one of the possibilities. In the equation that I circled in blue on the left hand side, we have the first number as not zero, the second number as zero, and the third number as zero. What about y and z? What if they both are zero? And if that is the case, then we also end up with zero. So by circling these three equations, we circled all the possibilities of having a product of zero. That means that there are no other cases that we could have a product of zero. That means that if we multiply two numbers and they're zero, then either the first number is zero, the second number is zero, or both of them are zero. So this property, the zero product property, is indeed true. We verified this. Thank you for watching this video. Here's a link to the playlist about some properties of zero in which this video is a part of. Feel free to click on this link.